How's it? My name is Andre Vaderman, vitamin to my brothers. My mission is to disciple men to have a daily word and prayer time and to inspire them to return to the old school value of respect, honor, loyalty, chivalry, and love. For of these, love is the greatest. For if I have not love, I am but a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And this is your weekly vitamin. How's it everybody? It's your weekly vitamin. Coming to you from a very, very sweaty Bahrain island. <coughs> Summer is uh, getting here in full force. So, uh, <laughs> it's rather hot and rather sweaty. But I prefer this to the uh, alternative, which is cold. Anyway, I'm on, a way, on my way to a friend's place just to go fetch some power tools because we want to make some pallet furniture for our, uh, our patio, veranda uh, so that we can sit outside in this glorious weather next to the swimming pool but that's not what I wanted to talk about today For the last week, I suppose, it seems like America is burning itself down. Now, I'm not in America. I'm not in the midst of the riots going on. I live in the Middle East. And we've been through our fair share of riots here on the island. And as an ex-infantryman from the South African Defence Force I was deployed to the townships in the apartheid years, in the 80s The military is not a scalpel, it's a very very blunt bat So I've seen my share of riots from the side of the people trying to stop them I've seen my fair share um, riots are not a pretty thing mob mentality man that's a horrible ugly stupid beast I, I, it's as if the true heart of humanity shows itself in a mob But this is not to say that the people protesting are wrong. The people, the, the riots in South Africa, in the, in the townships that I was in, those people were right to protest. They were protesting a government that was oppressing them, killing them, forcing them to live in little areas where they are not from, what we used to call townships black townships the, the problem the, the, the thing that is most a lot of those protests back in South Africa were peaceful they started out peaceful but then the agitators got involved and those are the people that would sweep up the crowd to violence now for whatever reason um, part of my training in urban I don't know what you want to call it I don't want to call it a warfare but urban oppression I suppose <laughs> part of my training was to look out for those agitators certain behavior patterns that you would look for and we used to shoot them I am, I thank God every single day of my life that I was not ever called on to pull the trigger in those situations 
that does not abolish me of the culpability because I'll tell you this if my number had been called I would have shot the way we were trained is in, in our basic training they would take you to a shooting range and they would see who could shoot the most accurate in my platoon I was designated rifleman number three purely just meant that I was the third most accurate shot in the platoon so I'll give you a little bit of an insight onto this so we would go to an, a, a riot or whatever was happening we would stand in a line we would have a commanding officer on top of the the vehicle behind us he would scan the crowd and look for the agitators and the commands used to be rifleman number whatever man in black shirt green cap on your own time and time on your own target and time fire and we would have to take that person out now thankfully I have not seen that happen in the riots in, in America right now because ours was a systematic racism it was a system set in place by a government through policies indoctrination and all kinds of stuff to make sure that we as white boys felt that we were superior to everybody else everybody everybody of a non-white color was designated an animal and I'll tell you this if you feel yourself superior and other people as evil animals that social that part of your psyche that part of your personality that says I should not be harming other people is very easily negated it's very easy to pull the trigger then when the person you're shooting is not a human being now I am able to say these things now after 30 years because the Lord has really worked on my heart he has shown me that racism is an insidious evil that should be stomped out wherever it is um, encountered but I will say this it's a long road it's not an easy thing to get rid of that type of evil in your heart every day you have to make a decision I will follow the Lord today I will do as Jesus commands today because although I'm saved by the grace of God by his salvation I am saved I have to fight my human nature every single day and my human nature wants to go back to what I was it does not like this new me and so I'm saying to you now that the riots the protests are, are good and right the riots may not be the protesters doing them it may be agitators it may be someone from outside these areas trying to use the protests as a vehicle to just cause chaos and anarchy I've seen this in my own experience I've seen how riots turn ugly because a certain few people agitate the emotions of the people that are quite rightfully protesting actions by a government or a police force that are wrong I watched that video my heart broke I watched the video sorry the video I'm talking about is the one where George Floyd was uh, executed murdered the part of my training was also sorry wrong road part of my training was also urban or hand-to-hand -hand combat and I'll tell you you know exactly the minute someone loses consciousness 
if you ask you have them in a stranglehold you know the exact moment and the harder part of this the harsher part of this is if you see you feel someone lose consciousness he's not dead yet you need to hold on for another minute two minutes three minutes to make sure that there's no blood flow to the brain and there's no oxygen to the brain that's how you make sure he's dead and that is what I saw on that video I saw a man lose consciousness and then pressure had kept up to make sure he was dead you know the moment it happens you cannot not so that was an evil evil deed And even that's not what I want to talk about right now. In the beginning of this whole thing, I was I was quite convinced these riots are not this whole thing is not a racial a racial thing. It's more police overreach by really bad people. Not all cops are racist. Not all cops are bad. Not all white people are racist. Not all black people are bad. But we have to honestly, earnestly look at ourselves. We gotta. I oh mean, we, we gotta look into the heart of ourselves. I think I'm on the wrong road. Yeah, I think I should have turned one earlier. Anyway. What I'm trying to say is we, we, we need to look at this whole situation honestly as white people and as someone that grew up as a racist someone that was in a system that was designed to um, strengthen that feeling of superiority I thought that this had been cleared out of my mind. So I was blithely going on saying I'm not a racist anymore. But I still have to. And I, and I, and I don't believe I am a racist. But there are unconscious, unconscious things that I do. That I also need to make sure of that that's not behavior that is conditioned. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. But what I do want to say is, I, um, all right, this is the road I need to be on. This is the road I need to be on. Sorry, people. I'll get back to this. Um, okay. So, I was listening to a podcast by a guy that I I, I respect immensely. His name is Black Dragon, uh, he's, a, he's a black motorcyclist, I think he's a president of his own uh, motorcycle club, I think he founded it. And he was talking about how he knew where, where he grew up, he grew up in, in the south somewhere, Georgia I think, and he was talking about how they all knew there were certain areas that they had to behave in a different way because they knew as black people 
they would be treated completely differently. And he told about how black mothers would um, teach their sons how to behave when the police stopped them. I've heard this before. But while I was listening to Black Dragon, I could hear the pain in his voice when he spoke about this. And it struck me. My parents never told me how to behave when confronted by a policeman. Not once. How do I say this? Not once did they say I need to behave subserviently. I need because there was an un unspoken understanding or belief that I would be treated fairly because I was white. To be continued. So the thing that struck me was the fact that I was never taught how to behave when I was stopped by police. Because there was an unspoken belief, or un, yeah, I would say unspoken belief, that as I was white and was not doing anything wrong, I would be treated fairly. That made me realize no matter how non-racial or, or non-racist I believe America to be because I do believe that America and American people are not inherently racist maybe maybe 50 60 years or 30 40 years ago it could have been I, I don't I, I know I know I know a lot of American people uh, I don't believe I don't believe America, Americans <coughs> are inherently racist I, I don't believe that but I do know that the human heart is a desperately desperately wicked place that I do know and that I know because I've read it and I've seen it Man's inhumanity, inhumanity to man is a horrible, horrible thing. But I think what I'm trying to say now is that as a white person, any white person, we have no idea what our black brothers go through. We have no idea. I have no idea what it means to, I mean I'm riding around here now in, in the Middle East on a motorbike with a huge big cross on my back proclaiming my faith to the world uh, putting all my trust in God but also knowing that um, I have a certain amount of privilege here the cops treat me differently than they do the Shias around here or even the um, the, the locals, they, they definitely treat me differently because I'm an expat, because I'm a Westerner. I mean, we've seen it. We'll go through checkpoints where we'll just, my wife and I will just be waved through. Other people will be stopped and questioned at length. I have no idea what that means as a white man. 
I have no idea what it means to be a black person in America. I have no idea what it means to be a black person in South Africa. Now, the flip side to this is black people don't know what it means to be a white person. And I think this is where we get to the crux of the matter, to the problem. None of us know what the other person's experience in, li in life is, all about, is like. None of us know. And so how can we fix, how can we fix this? I'll tell you, I think there's only one way. I honestly think there's only one way. And that is through Jesus. Because Jesus can work, I mean Jesus worked on my heart so well. Resolve the hatred in my heart, resolve the hardness of it. Released the guilt. And what he has done has opened my heart and mind to actually listen to other people. To listen. And not listen to respond, but listen to understand. He's enabled me to hear the pain in a black man's voice when he speaks about how he has to behave in a certain way in the land of his birth. I firmly believe for America, for the world, Jesus is the only answer. There is no other way. by which the world can be saved. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is vitamin art. One more thing I wanted to say before I go. It is time, men. It is time that the men of God, the children of the, of the risen Lord, that we go down on our knees and pray for this world. And evil triumphs when good men do nothing. I think that was said by Sir Edmund Burke. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. I'll go check. But the only thing needed for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. So I am saying, I am calling Christ's men, Christ's followers to say no more. No more. Stop the looting. Stop the violence. And stand up for each other. Good men need to stand against the evil four square and say in the name of Christ this shall not be. I am praying for America. I am praying for the world. I am praying and doing battle in the spiritual realm against the forces of darkness. Against the principalities and strongholds. They shall not stand. 
not because I am powerful, but because my God is. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Some will bow and confess with so much joy in our hearts, so much gladness and an exuberance and as an outcry of victory, as an outcry of love. Some will bow with an outcry of excruciating pain. Evil needs to be confronted wherever it is found. The evil that happened to George Floyd needs to be confronted and sorted. The evil that is happening in the, in the burning of innocent people's livelihoods needs to be confronted and sorted. We cannot allow this to continue unchecked any longer. Black lives do matter. White lives matter, all life matters, and I'm not saying that to negate anything that the Black Lives Movement is saying. I am agreeing with them, Black Lives Matter. Every single person that draws breath on this earth matters to Christ. He feels their pain, he feels their joy, he loves them so much, he died for them. We can do no less than stand up for them and say this evil has no place in our society. This evil has been vanquished. It's just dying and kicking out in desperation. The more we feed it the more it comes back to life. The more we strangle it, the more it dies. So before I'm too worked up, this is now really vitamin out. Peace, brothers. Hello. If you like the video, please do me a song and subscribe, like, and share. Thank you and God bless.